Linda. As a dental assistant, I don't know how many times I've been asked what's better, a traditional toothbrush or an electronic toothbrush. And what I have to say to them is, not, is that the toothbrush is not what's important, it's how you brush your teeth. Many of us today don't know that, many of us today don't brush our teeth for the recommended amount of time and maybe brushing our teeth too hard. Today I will demonstrate how to properly brush your teeth, proper methods of flossing, and some helpful tips and tricks to maintain a healthy smile. So brushing your teeth. Why is brushing, brushing your teeth important? One, it removes all the plaque to prevent tooth decay. And two, if you don't brush your teeth, all the bacteria from your mouth will go into your bloodstream and reach your heart, your kidneys, to lead to health problems and even death. So what type of toothbrush should I use? The electronic toothbrushes or traditional toothbrush is your preference. A lot of electronic toothbrushes have built-in timers so you know that you're brushing, brushing for the recommended amount of time. What's most important is to use a soft bristle toothbrush. I know they have medium and hard toothbrushes out there, but soft bristle toothbrushes is what's recommended because you don't want to brush your teeth too hard. It can be too abrasive on your enamel and your gums. So I want everyone to take out their toothbrush. And I want them to open them up and hold the toothbrush as if you're about to brush your teeth. I see a lot of people holding their toothbrushes with their full grip. This is the main cause why people are brushing their teeth way too hard. The amount of pressure that you only need is to hold with your thumb and your, fork, or your, your pointer finger. This will effectively brush all the plaque off of your teeth. Now what type of toothpaste is to you? We have many different toothpaste on the market. We have tartar control, cavity control. We have teeth for sensitivity, which I have provided you Sensodyne. We also have tooth for whitening. The most important thing is you want to look for is you want to have fluoride in your toothpaste. Fluoride can be found in our water, in our food, and also in our toothpaste. It's important to have fluoride in our toothpaste because the fluoride is going to help strengthen your teeth and also prevent tooth decay. The ADA, which is the American Dental Association, recommends to brush your teeth for a minimum of two to three minutes. Brushing your teeth any less or more is not as effective. So I'm going to demonstrate how to brush your teeth. It doesn't matter if you want to start from the top or the bottom, it's whatever you prefer. So holding your toothbrush with your fork, your thumb, and your pointer finger, you want to make sure you're doing slight circular motions, very soft. And you also want to hold your toothbrush at a 45 degree angle to make sure that you're brushing underneath your gums. Then you want to move on to your chewing surfaces of your teeth. A lot of food buildups gets into the crevices. Also don't forget, to brush on the inside of your teeth, holding at a 45 degree angle. A lot of us might have some trouble brushing our very back teeth, and how to prevent this is to close your jaw a little bit, which pushes away the bone, giving you extra room to brush behind your teeth. Flossing your teeth. This is another common question that I get. Do I floss my teeth before or after brushing? It doesn't matter. It's just important that you floss your teeth. I like to recommend flossing your teeth before you brush. And this is because once people brush their teeth without flossing beforehand, after they're done brushing, they feel like their mouth is already clean. The tooth toothbrush's bristles can't get in between the teeth, so that's why we need a floss. And when you floss, you want to make sure that you wrap it in between your two fingers. And when you go down, you want to gently seesaw the motions down until you reach to your gums. You don't want to push force very, very hard or you're going to hurt your gums. So once you've gotten all the way down into your gums, you want to hug each tooth to get all the plaque in between. And this is also getting the debris out in between your gums. And then when you move on to the next tooth, you want to wrap the dirty floss around your finger and get a new piece of floss because you don't want the debris from the tooth before to get into the next tooth that you're about to floss. Also, we have floss like this, which you have in your bag, which are one-time use disposable. This first came out into the market for older patients who have arthritis and were having a hard time wrapping the floss around their fingers and getting to the back teeth. It has been very popular with kids and adults, but if you like to use this type of floss, when you floss in between one teeth, go ahead and rinse it off with water and move on to the next tooth so you don't bring the debris into the next tooth. Some tips and tricks. Um, one important thing is how you store your toothbrush. 
I know most of us probably store our toothbrushes in our bathroom because that's the most common place that we brush our teeth at. So storing your toothbrush, if you're leaving it on the counter, all the debris and the dust is going to settle onto your toothbrush. And that's not very healthy. And also when you use the bathroom and you flush your toilet, all the bacteria gets into the air and goes back onto your toothbrush. So to prevent this, you can put it in a medicine cabinet or put it in a cap. A lot of these electronic toothbrushes have storage for them and have UV cleaning. Also, I want everyone to take out their piece of gum and go ahead and chew that. Yeah. Chewing ADA, which is the American Dental Association approved gum, after meals for 30 minutes is a good trick to do if you don't have your toothbrush with you. And this is because this ingredient in here is called xylitol, and what xylitol does is produce saliva, which is very cleansing to the mouth. I like to chew Orbit, that's my favorite. So if you're not sure if your gum is good, make sure it's sugarless and make sure it contains xylitol. And I hate it when I sit next to somebody and they have bad breath. Sometimes you might not might think that your breath isn't very that bad, but a good way to check to see if your breath is bad is go ahead and lick the back of your wrist, let it sit there for a few seconds, and go ahead and smell it. And if your wrist smells stinky, it is stinky. So you can chew some gum, brush your teeth, floss your teeth. <laughs> Also, another thing is to make sure you go to your dentist or your hygienist for your annual visits. What they do there is see um, if you have any cavities, because it's good to prevent early on, because the cavity will grow and grow bigger. Also, they will also do your cleaning there as well. They're going to remove the tartar and the calculus, which you can't remove with your toothbrush. So going to the dentist is one thing that most all Americans dread doing. As I have just shown you how to brush your teeth, floss your teeth, and some tips and tricks to maintain a healthy smile, your next dentist appointment will be a positive one.